So Carpenter by now had proven that he was an adept genre filmmaker. Had he bowed out now, he would have left the scene with a respectable little filmography, and horror fans would remember him always as the man who gave us Halloween. Much like how Tob Hooper is beloved for giving audiences the text for Chainsaw Massacre, even though his later filmography never matched up to his early hit. But Carpenter's next film, the second adaption of the short novella Who Goes There? The Thing, cements his reputation as a horror legend. He's no longer a great horror movie director, he's now hit the stratosphere, he's one of the top dogs, in contention when people ask, who is the best horror movie director? Even if his output was relatively short by this time, it's a testament to how fantastic and well-loved at least Halloween and The Thing were. But it wasn't though, was it? Strange as it is to say, when The Thing came out, the critics annihilated it and it flopped at box office. Perhaps it was because everyone was still in sci-fi gooey gooey dreamland after Spielberg's E.T., who knows. But it's a shame, and funnily enough, a noticeable trend in Carpenter's works, in that some of his movies that are more celebrated today were flops when they came out. It had a major effect on his career, and it does make you wonder what his filmography would look like had some of his flops not lost so much money. The reaction to the thing though was downright ridiculous. At least it is painfully obvious today. Maybe there is, you know, misunderstood movies today that will go on to become classics in decades from now. But when you think that the original movie's director, Christian Nyby, publicly denounced the film, Roger Ebert hated it, Ennio Morricone's outstanding, bleak, minimalistic score, considered a classic of horror today, was nominated for a Razzie, you have to start asking, what exactly was everyone smoking in the 80s? Everything, probably. The Thing, with interestingly a huge budget for a horror movie back then, at $15 million, follows a research team in Antarctica that becomes infiltrated by a shape-shifting murderous alien which can take the form of any one of them, making anyone and everyone a suspect. Fear, paranoia and hysteria ensure in what is a spellbindingly captivating film from start to finish. It's one of my favourite movies and, as I've said before, left me completely flawed. This film is truly perfect. Better movies than The Thing exist, but if you're anal, you can always find little niggly things that could have been tweaked for some minor improvement. You'd be hard pressed though to find anything to improve in The Thing. It hits the mark in every single category. The collection of all male characters are memorable. You don't forget after watching The Thing, the likes of Mac, Charles, Blair, Windows and the Doc, and there's specific moments and quotes that always stick with you. Either because of their tension diffusing humour, like Palmer's You Gotta Be Fucking Kidding, or enigmatic lines like McCready's Why Don't We Just Wait Here For A While, See What Happens. Essentially what the thing is, is a collection of perfectly executed horror sequences sewn flawlessly together. I did a breakdown on this channel about a year ago, if you're interested, in, on the uh, defibrillator scene and how the scene achieves its effectiveness, but that one scene is a perfect representation of what makes the movie so great. The characters, the tension and the effects, the jaw-dropping practical effects. Special effects with Rob Bottin, only 22 at the time and eventually hospitalised with exhaustion, set a benchmark that has yet to be matched and most likely never will be. The sheer creativity and the ideas in the movie, from the spider head thing to the dog face splitting open, and then the technical ability to put that imagination onto celluloid. The creature scenes in the movie are ridiculously outrageous, and they are only matched by Carpenter's mastery of the horror craft to form one of the most suspenseful and shocking horror movies of all time. Bravo. And how about the ending as well, eh? That in particular was one of the main reasons I just sat and stared blindly at the ending credits. I was so gobsmacked. The only other film I can think of where this occurred as a result of the ending was The Usual Suspects. It's so perfectly set up. It goes without saying the missing scene is as per usual perfect, but the spooky arrival of Charles, the dialogue between him and Mac, and the final grave few seconds before the film closes with a friendly reminder from Morricone why he's the best film composer around. It's so perfectly balanced in terms of evidence as to who, if anyone, is the thing. Perhaps they both are even, but the tragedy is, 
and ultimately the demonstration of how bleak of an impression the ending of the film gives is that even if both of them are human, they are both dead, because soon the fire will die and they will freeze to death.